Hello. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, this hopefully woke up everybody. Um, so, hello and welcome to the session about the RIC. Um, I think we will take a time that everybody introduce themselves quickly. Uh, so, please, Sami. Oh, hi. Hi, all. I'm Sami, coming from Nokia, out from the Finland. Could we here in Berlin? Uh, hello, I'm Martin Hoffman. I am from Remedo Labs. I'm a technical solution manager and we are located in Poznan, in Poland. So I'm Matt Sergson. I'm a global principal de uh, business development lead at Tieto Every. And we are, we are globally, I'm based in Sweden. We have colleagues from Poland and all, all, all over the place here. And my name is Gerald Huber and I'm a senior innovation engineer at Telefonica Germany. Um, well, you know, coming from an operator, of course, my, my interest is, is maybe not just a RIC, so especially we are one of the brownfield operators. So we have a lot of sites which are not open run, not uh, standardized. So how do you see the, the possibilities that a RIC, which is more or less built for open run, can also find a way into the classic run world? Maybe Sami. Okay. Uh, yeah, very good question, and I, I think we need to do it. For me, the RIG is just one of the products what we look at. We look at network management, so on, non real time RIG, near real time RIG, automation in general. So, anyways, the hybrid management is what we believe in, and we need to make things work both on the traditional and the open run. No, no question. Okay, I, I think I will like uh, agree. So as we are like an XAPS and Arabs providing, but uh, mainly we are we want to provide our algorithms like design into the network. So like every mechanism that is able to provide us with the data from from the network and allows us to control some network parameters is okay for us and like allows us to provide our, our solutions. So. Like we had also some kind of security exops integrated with Amarisoft uh, software, and then we utilized the, the API of the Amarisoft, and it uh, worked like a rig for us. So, yeah, this is uh, this is the also the possibility and and the chance. Yeah, and and uh, perhaps well, I mean sometimes we talk about the network being brownfield, right? Everybody understands that. <laughs> Kind of, but we should also maybe be thinking about that the network operations environment is also brownfield. There's a, there's a lot of stuff there. Right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> don't mention the war <laughs> or what. And and the and the apps you can, you can view them as brownfield as well. You have some from Remedo, some from Nokia, some from different people. So that all needs to need to come together. Right? So I'm I'm sort of missing the the aspect of programmability. I mean, you, you can program apps that, that we understand, but how can I program so that we can get all these things to work together? Sort of the, the integration programmability, I could say. Yeah, v very important point. And for that, what we in Nokia have been doing for products, what we have, to build a open API ecosystem that can be called RESTful APIs, that can, you can do anything what you can do with the product by calling it from outside, and that provides you a possibility to do any type of programmable platforms. So when you see the functionalities to Recon, this is also one of the, the, the headlines which we have today, it's about the energy efficiency. So uh, what do you think the, the RIC can bring into this field of energy efficiency? Maybe Mats? Should I start? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, energy efficiency is a, is a huge topic. We talked about that uh, last couple of days. Uh, and I think uh, Michael Duber from, from uh, DT gave a, uh, gave a good, very holistic view on, on energy efficiency. Um, but of course, the RIC, the RIC can, um, can provide a, a way to program and a, and a way to, to control the network, not only turning cells on and off, but, but perhaps... There are regulations around how you can how you can trade um, energy with the grid, for example. So there's a I think there's a whole span of things you can potentially control, like like you're saying, Sami. I mean, can can I call these restful APIs and start to control things? Uh, I can build pretty pretty advanced functionalities on top of these kind of platforms. 
So from our perspective, like Rick is, is good and important because it provides us with some kind of abstract uh, layer. Yeah? Yeah, so it, uh, like some, then some kind of these APIs we don't have to care because the Rick is taking care of how to, how to collect the measurements from run and transfer it into the, our X apps and R apps. And it makes us as a developers like uh, allow to focus more on the algorithm itself. So this is what Rick is providing us. It may, also, as we are originated, we are spin-off of the university, so we are more focused into the algorithms itself. And uh, yeah, and the Rick allows us to integrate to, for the better cooperation between industry and science, so we can implement some of the scientific ideas into the industry through the Rick. Yeah, I would actually start this one uh, from the non-real-time rig perspective. Like at Nokia, we do have a wonderful product, and old one already, called Monterey Zone. We have some 130 customers using it, and we provide evolution path from today's zone to the non-real-time rig that it it's widens the possibility, and those customers that we today have, have possibility to move to that direction. Anyways, for that one, we have a module to save energy as much as we can uh, by keeping the network performance unimpacted. Save the energy, we have some 60, 70 operators who use that now, today, 24-7, and that's on the non-real-time rig level. But then if I look at the near real time, to me personally, the big thing, what we are now actually, now we are piloting and bringing out now, is on the near real time rig for the real time needs of rig, we are having a X app called virtual power plant controller. And it basically, okay, you as an operator with that, you you use the battery energy when the energy prices are high, then when the energy prices are lower, you charge the batteries. And But third thing, what is most important, and where the real-time needs come, we have possibility as an operator to sell the energy back to the grid. And for, for those transmission, transmission systems, we have to sometimes work in less than a second to do that. And that's why it's a wonderful X app on top of the rear, rear real-time rig. So non-real-time rig for the, for the whole network and then for these kind of cases near real-time. So maybe Martin, um, your development X apps and R apps, so you, and we had this morning also this information that sometimes it, they should work together as, as one app more or less. So are you already into this and do you have some experience? Uh, yeah, so we have uh, one project that my colleague Pavel was uh, talking during the bow yesterday. It was, uh, this is the project in cooperation with Deutsche Telekom and uh, there is some kind of hierarchical energy efficiency where we have an X app that has uh, like a global view and co collects statistics into like say order of minute and it uh, instructs the X app uh, how to interact. So the X app has uh, lower time, lower time scale, it can react uh, fast. So, like immediately after it observes some kind of uh, like uh, load increase or something, it can immediately send the, the decision of whether to uh, like to in this case to turn on some cell that was in the energy saving state. Yeah, but uh, on the other hand, the Arab is uh, like supervising this uh, this solution. It is on the top of that it is observing and adjusting the parameters of, uh, of the XAP. So whether the, okay, it can observe that the cell was maybe switched off too, too late, that maybe there was opportunity to save some more energy by uh, like more, let's say, aggressive threshold for switching cell off, and then instructs the, the XAP on, on how, to, how to react, and, and the, like the, the loop is uh, like closed, uh, so then the XAP, uh, uh, XAP is tried with the new parameters and then the ARAP will uh, also supervise it. So we're now seeing XAP and ARAPs, and, but honestly I see in XAP there's some kind of reluctancy on the vendor side, <laughs> that uh, maybe also on operator side that they don't get killed by, by functions. So how, how do you see the, 
the, the coexistence of, of those two uh, instances of, of the RIC? Yeah, um, I mean, this, this could take long. Maybe we could start with, uh, I'm, I'm not entirely comfortable with, with that we have two platforms. I mean, we can call them different. It's actually about the, the different apps and their need and their control loops rather than the platforms should be different. But that's an engineering view on this. Um, but but I, th I also think that we're... Um, what should I say? I mean, there, there's a lot of, of integration needed here to get these systems, if, especially if we start to mix and match uh, apps. And, and you, you may have different um, intents and targets for different apps that, that you may need to control. And I think we're, it seems like we're missing that overarching conflict or, or these, these top-level apps that, that you now work with and, and we start to get going on that. So, so that, that needs much more evolution, I think. And we're, we're in a couple of projects with Remedo that we work quite close with. Uh, that also has sort of multiple apps and trying to get those from, from different vendors in that case. Uh, quite complicated integration scenarios actually at the end of the day. Hey, Gerald, I have to answer to your comment about vendors do not like the error or whatever, how it was. <laughs> Anyways, if, if I think about this, this is all about the openness and the value is exactly there. Nothing else. Otherwise, we have to show, like I mentioned today, what we have with the proprietary things. The whole value is in openness. And I, I want to have every one of you to bring R apps or X apps on top of the platform, what we do. That is the point. Sorry, this was a misunderstanding. Uh, I'm referring this to the point that it's easy to kill the network by this. You know, if you yeah. go to an R app and it's out of control, then. The operators are not happy if the network is killed. That's, that's about this. Okay. I, I believe in your openness, no problem. Now, but, <laughs> but that's sort of my point as well. This requires serious integration. True. This, this, is, this is similar to integrating RS and DUs from different vendors. And, and, and I also think that we're, especially with the near real time rig, let's, let's consider this is a network element. It's, it's not something else. I mean, it, it, has, it has typically um, control plane like functionality. We tend to call it management plane, but if you, if you go back 100 years, uh, people were making phone calls by, by moving cables. And now we're doing that automatically. We call it control plane. It's automatic, right? <laughs> if I want to call Sami, it's, it's automatic, <laughs> right? But it's, it's done by network elements that are embedded into the network. And, and the near real time to me is a, is, is a network element. Maybe you can pick up this one thing, because recently there was a uh, white paper created, I'm not sure if it's published, uh, within the IFO Lab from Fraunhofer Institute, about uh, conflict management. I think this is getting to be very important, because if you have different vendors for R apps and X apps, and then even um, uh, maybe contributing uh, um, targets which they're going for. So do you see this as an app on top of it, or is it a rule set, or what do you think, how we can uh, solve these conflicts which are coming up there, because there will be conflicts as soon as you have energy saving and uh, maximum throughput, for example. Martin, do you want to start? Uh, yeah. Oh. Hey. Uh, yeah, so like uh, within the remit, we are also interested in this conflict mitigation. There is uh, my like, colleague and uh, Adrian Cleeks who is uh, very involved in this topic and has uh, several papers and like I would encourage to to go go through this because like he is an expert, and I think that like my personal view is that uh, probably one of the approaches could be that we can think of the rig as uh, some kind of operating system for these uh, apps. Right? Like, like we have like Windows on Android who is managing the apps that are running over the the operating system. Then the rig is managing the operation of the accepts and erupts, and then we can think of this conflict mitigation functionality as one of the function of the rig to manage as an operating system the underlying apps. So well, this is one of the concepts. Yeah, good question. But I, I believe that we need some sort of rules or like primary focus of something like non-real-time rig. 
what is my main task? I keep the network with the best performance it can. That is never compromised. And then we can add on, put add on other modules like energy savings, what we are doing, but never with the expense of the main task what we have. That is never compromised. So I, I, I don't truly know if we have, uh, there's no need in my opinion for apps called conflict management in that case. But anyways, that, like the main task for the different, different tools in the tool chain need to be set up correctly. Uh, maybe I'm, I'll add, I mean, theoretically what we talk about is referred to as Pareto front. You have, you have targets in different dimensions. Uh, there is a trade-off between those targets. This is not a linear curve. There's some kind of curve, right? And you, you might want to... I mean, there's costs involved also. There's not only the quality for the end user. There's the cost of production, like, like energy or, or, or other costs. Um, so and this, is, this is quite complex, theoretically, especially if you start to add more than two dimensions. Mm -hmm. Now the Pareto front is, is not, it's not a line. <laughs> um, but, but that's the theor theoretical thing. So I think we, we would need more than simple policies to control that sooner or later. We, we may embed it as, as algorithms. Probably we will. I think we will, we will have that. Uh, and then you can view them as yet other types of apps that controls other apps. Or, or we can call it the policy management subsystem of RICS. Uh, this is not important, I think. I, I, would, I would vote for the app concept because that, then we're reusing a concept that we know and, and that we can program. Okay, um, so due to the fact that we not just have radios here in the i 42 lab, we also have a RIC uh, from Nokia. Um, maybe you can give a brief info, what is it about and what is the, you know, the RIC in i 14 y what is it for you? <coughs> it, it, i 14 y provides us means to test it in the real kind of lab with the real things around it, like there is no possibility. We cannot test these kind of things in our own labs, even in Nokia. That is just Nokia. But provides a possibility to simulate real-life situations and test with the other, other things in the, in the whole tool chain. Uh, so like our experience with i14 Y Labs starts with the Plugfest, which was like a great uh, opportunity for us to collaborate with other companies and deploy our X up on the commercial rig platforms. Uh, and other thing, uh, other view that is uh, ongoing now is uh, like, uh, like as Sami said, that, that there is a need for the, some common space where, where some evaluations can be done. So, and uh, we have a collaboration in terms of energy efficiency with i 14 Lab to establish some common procedures, some common framework for testing energy saving errors, because this is one of the problems that there are a lot of XAP developers like us, and like each of us is claiming that our XAP like provides the, the best energy saving gains, and now the question is how to compare them. And this is this activity with i 14 Lab is we are trying to answer this uh, question and provide like review some documents and propose some framework on testing and procedures to, to compare the energy efficiency both of the apps and both of the some run components. Yeah, and we have some short presentation in our marketplace so like if someone is interested they will be open for the discussion. Uh, we, I mean, we are we are different than these guys, <laughs> right? Because we are we are a, soft, a professional services company. We provide R and D services. So, so our the software that we have written is inside the, the products that you have in the lab, basically. Um, so, so, but but we of course we would want to collaborate more on within the i fourteen Y lab because the more this gets an open environment, like you say, Sami, the more we think our services are needed. The, the kind of domain expertise to, to glue this stuff together. Uh, there's also another aspect, uh, and we're showcasing that in our booth over there, that is how can you generate synthetic network data on a, on a scale? Uh, so so we, have a, we have a technology that can generate 
user data for 100,000 users moving in realistic OpenStreetMap environments. And we think that that could be quite interesting for validating the, the effects of Marcin's algorithms you know, under realistic conditions. Yeah, I have to say that if I look the years back, what I've been looking after the portfolio, the best innovations, all of the best innovations, we have been doing together with the operators, customers, and because that has the environment where this is used. And I, I, I hope that this I-14Y gives us a bit similar environment to innovate and bring new things. I think we would love to. <laughs> uh, and, and I think this is all about, and we've heard it multiple times today, it's a collaboration. It's not one company doing one thing. Maybe with one other company, it's really about joining together, even the discussion before with the different labs that we connect to each other and that we learn from each other. I think this is the way we can tackle this because it's quite complex, quite big, and probably too big for the single companies which are. So maybe um, in the last minutes, so what's your wish for the RIC in the future? Not just at 14 wives, so what do you wish to, to come through to, to make the world better? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's a big now, yeah. sorry, for, sorry, sorry. Yeah, okay, <laughs> but anyways, uh, it is around the openness and the usage of it. I would be very happy if as many partners as possible are using our non-real-time rig and bring value for you guys, so it, that it really is taken into use. That is the whole point. That brings, there we can see the value where it's used and with th that gives us an environment where Many, many other partners are bringing unique value of their own. Yeah, so for us as the XAPs and ARAPs and algorithm developers, the one of the wish is to have some common space with the data because like, like to provide a good solution for the network operators, like we need the, the data and like we wish that there was a place where some anonymized data is provided that can be used to to train our algorithms to observe some some trends to resolve some problems that then occur by analyzing this data. So this is one of our, let's say, first place on our wish list. And I would say the second place or is uh, like to be able to control these uh, things that are like, because the standard of the open run is quite huge and a lot of parameters are claimed to be possible to, to control, but the other question is how much of this will be available while going into the hardware? How much of the parameters we would have to control and how much parameters to, to observe? And of course the wishing list that we will have like all the parameters that in the standard and all the KPIs to observe. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to add to what you guys said, right? <laughs> I think you covered it good. Uh, maybe what I want to add is perhaps the brownfield aspects of this, that, that we're not only looking at the Oran, we're looking at the, the, the network at hand for, each, for, for, for Telefonica, for example, and, and how we can use that, as, as Sami was saying, as a platform for innovation onto your network, and then whether that gradually migrates towards open run. It, it seems from the analyst reports that, that it will, right? <laughs> In general. <laughs> well, network automation will not start with open run. This is already there, it's, uh, it's needed, and the, the more efficient we are, the, the better. I think we started long ago with the sun. Maybe it could be better. Maybe it's uh, on the sides very, very good. Um, but I think the, the, the beauty of it, and um, as, you know, listening to the day-to-day, the -day, we talked a lot of the radio and, and all these things, but in my personal opinion, this is the enabler for the real fun stuff. I think uh, we heard it this morning. This is, then we can really do things. It's not just a replacement of an existing technology with the movement into the digitalization. We will be able to do things with a rig in maybe even very close to real time, in big data solutions, in clusters. I think this is, the, the open run will kick off these opportunities. And I hope that, uh, that, that we can make this possible, yeah? with starting as today. And I, I think, I mean, I've been talking with Bernd, who's probably here somewhere. Uh, they are doing optimization software, but it's not an app. app. 
So, but we need to be able to hook those things in as well, right? That, that's, the, that's the comment about the brownfield of the existing operational environment. So, so it's not about ripping that out and pulling it in again. I think some folks have tried it, but it has never succeeded. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And one thing actually for this brownfield, what we have been doing, and we haven't been discussing about it yet, it's uh, artificial intelligence and the usage of that in these areas. We have been using it in our zone since 2017, and now this year launch a next level thing where the AI is going to the brains of the zone, cognitive zone. It's, it, it gives amazing opportunities, but we have been doing it twice where we are at the moment. I, I believe that that will change a lot of things going forward. So uh, those are the final, final, final last words. Um, you want to give a final statement to, to opinion or? Uh, no opinion or things like that. Thanking all of you for coming here and listening to us. Thank you.